Welcome to Talk Sustainability with Sandeep. In this channel, we go beyond emotions and focus on corporate sustainability from a practitioner's perspective. We engage in discussions with those who are active on the ground and learn from their experiences. We understand the challenges and nuances of what it takes to deliver sustainability. Our focus is India, but learnings are applicable broadly. I am Sandeep Raghuvanshi and I hope that the resource we are creating would help you in your understanding of how sustainability is being practiced. Packaging has witnessed significant innovation over the last few decades. Lot of it is multi-layered and combines properties of various materials to achieve desired protective functionalities. This has greatly improved availability of various products from food, clothing, electronics and many more. to large extent it is also one of the pillars on which e-commerce industry succeeds but with its proliferation comes the challenge of handling the waste to understand the end of life of multi-layer packaging today i have monisha narke founder and ceo of rur green life who has been working on waste management for several years so welcome monica uh, before we get started with the topic Uh, if you could just explain to to whoever is listening what is your background how did you get started into this and how long you have been working on this uh well good afternoon sandeep and i'm really excited to be here with talk sustainability with you because it's uh, a very close topic to my heart and uh, i have been uh, so monisha narke is my name and i started my green journey a decade ago uh, back in 2009 uh with a uh, with an endeavor to make my own home green so it was a very uh, simple call to action where i was uh, perturbed by the piles of waste lying around uh, especially after becoming a mom of two kids there was something that i was really concerned in terms of air quality impact and i realized waste was something that was uh, playing a major role in how the environment uh, is and how we as citizens of the environment get impacted so that's how i started my journey and i founded a volunteer forum this is a group of people i connected with and we formed a a, a concept called rur that's r u reducing reusing recycling so all the simple three r's is what i wish to practice and we started with a lot of environment education to sensitize and educate moms children people around uh, our neighborhood to adopt green practices so that's how rur was born and uh, rur green life is a is a registered organization we are a social enterprise and uh, we have been working uh, to develop and design innovative solutions towards maximizing recycling of waste and our model is end to end and decentralized so when i started my journey the focus was on how we as citizens can take charge or responsibility uh, to do our bit for the environment so it was more about what can be done by me as an individual or by as a community uh, to not have to burden the the landfills or burden the environment around with piles of waste and therefore all the thinking or the solutions that we worked on was decentralized where uh, we can maximize that uh, based into a resource by ourselves uh, so this is how rur has evolved and uh, we are a small team based out of mumbai uh, where we have our office in mahi a team of 10 and we have our manufacturing uh, facility where we uh, make our systems for meeting uh, this decentralized waste management model that's in umargaon it's a small town in gujarat at the border of maharashtra and gujarat where we are uh, uh you know have a small setup where we make products uh, for uh like biocomposters for converting kitchen waste into compost a lot of recycled products like furniture made from tech pack cartons which we'll talk about uh as we go along the session so that's what we make and uh, we also have been actively now uh, in over the years uh developed this technology where we can uh, recycle 70% of the biodegradable waste replicating the forest way of composting so it's an aerobic composter we filed a patent and we have got a green pro certified by indian green building council 
uh, the reason i uh, you know we this whole innovation happened over the years was because although waste management if you really go to see uh like composting is a very conventional science traditionally it's been done over the years uh or you know generations and very easy to do however the whole urbanization the whole uh, city culture that's come in where we have concretized our spaces there are, there's no space we're all cramped up uh led to not making this a viable uh practice and therefore a lot of our waste today uh, in all the metros especially gets bagged and dumped uh, on a truck and obviously uh, leading to methane and greenhouse gases and causing a lot of climate change and global warming uh, which and my real eye opener to you know really work in this space came from my journey to the onar asia's largest landfill where i tried to trek up that among this pile of uh, you know all kinds of waste there packaging uh, shoes you know bedding you name it you find it all there and in that whole smog of gas uh, uh, it was a real shocker and that's when i realized that uh, the city uh, needed a solution uh, needed a, a solid solution to ensure that you know we are not burdening the environment and that's how we started working on a lot of research and science in terms of how we can develop systems and solutions for recycling so that's how our journey has been um now the way we got involved in uh, in uh, finding solutions was that we uh, firstly did a waste audit of home waste corporate waste um uh, school waste you know we did a lot of waste audits in the beginning we realized that almost 90 to 95% of waste that's generated um by consumers whether they are in a home of a school institution um factory can be recycled and must be recycled i mean definitely uh it has potential and so that gave us a very good primary research that uh, we need to find recyclers or collaborate with industry uh to recycle a lot of the waste so while 70% of home waste or residential waste is biodegradable and maybe in a corporate office 30 40% is biodegradable that means it can be it comes from the natural source it's something we consume food peel steels eggshells meat fish bones all this can be composted so first step we uh you know found a solution to compost that and we developed a technology called uh, RUR green gold aerobic biocomposter which is a in vessel technology with adequate aeration completely zero energy uh, rodent proof rust proof uh, you know simple things in the design where we use stainless steel for the lid so you know making it a robust solution so people can adopt and therefore we can compost our waste the balance 30% primarily 20 to 25% is packaging uh all kinds of packaging so cardboard paper or uh, multi layer packaging or plastic hard plastic soft plastic metal glass all this makes up 20 25% of your waste at home or in a residential society in a corporate office the percentage increases about 30 40 50% based on what consumption happens there uh and that can be recycled so how can we channelize that so uh, as an organization are you are uh, looked at offering the front end solution for channelizing which involves uh, obviously awareness to sort and segregate the waste to generate an adequate volume by community based approach towards recycling and then finding right recyclers uh this is something i like to focus on is right recycling uh which uh, is is always a question mark i mean we really need to come up with more innovation in this uh, space for right recycling uh um, that uh, is an ever evolving uh you know thing that we all need to as industry come together to find solutions on the balance 5 to 10% uh which is our hazardous or what we call domestic hazardous waste uh you know absorbent diapers and napkins syringes metal parts shops 
or broken glass these are what we call as trash or reject waste uh, we are still uh, working towards finding alternatives for these or green alternatives to reduce it and also looking at solutions but honestly that 5 10% is still a question mark that we don't have uh, answers but to kind of currently gets dumped from our 100 plus project sites across india i think i mean this is this is incredible because what you have covered is essentially the entire problem we are talking about right the the visit that you talk about of this big landfill in fact this is one thing which surprisingly right there is so much of uh, lack of awareness among the people because in the end the waste whatever we generate has to go somewhere and the entire urban areas when they do it it's just that some of it is in the site unfortunately in indian cities all over the place but when you see the bulk in these landfill that's when it hits you what what we are talking about right and it is it is so massive now you you talked about the composting and of course the for all the organic waste that we talk about composting is natural it's just that the way it is organized right now that unfortunately what could be a very simple natural process also is simply not you know we are not able to achieve that and you cannot have just this one way movement that is happening of all the materials moving into the cities and not going back to where it comes from because be it food be it anything else right unless and until it goes back into that regenerative cycle i mean how is the next year crop going to come and and this one way movement uh, of anything that we talk about right but just i wanted to uh, to understand a little better and there are two topics i would want to focus on more from your vast knowledge of this field one is how do you see the overall economics working what are those challenges in getting when you talk about the right recyclers right now of course there is a challenge of the recycling and when we talk about challenge in recycling cycling it has a lot to do with the economics because in the end the the way the waste management industry of india currently works there is a reverse economics which is built in to certain extent because a lot of waste is actually sold right and hence there has to be some way that this money has to flow to make this whole industry viable uh, there is of course lack of oversight on regulations and hence you have that's a lack of a level playing field for scientific processors scientific recyclers to be able to come and work with the economics the way the industry is structured right now so that is one area the second area of course is that when we go beyond let's say the the food waste which is by volume at least by weight and volume it is one of the larger ones as you talk about but then there is other kind of waste also which is which is probably a little bit trickier and we have the plastic and the conversion of this waste into fuel is one thing which is functioning reasonably well to large extent but lot of other uh, let's say right recycling or uh, the end use is currently not where it should be and the the packaging is one of the important areas there because it's also one of the fastest growing uh, uh, contributors to the overall waste that is being generated right and with covid i think this is this is going to increase further because there is more protection more barriers that will be required for everything and and the whole push towards the single use uh, you know which was to eliminate the single use is kind of coming back because even by regulations okay. it is coming back right not the people concerns and these are all valid concerns so this becomes more important uh, in today's time when we talk about the packaging waste so if you could share little bit more of your understanding of what exactly this whole uh, multi layered packaging business is all about why is it so very important and why is it growing and what are the challenges associated with it at the end of life of it so i think everything needs to be wrapped i mean uh, um, you know and i the first package when i started audio was the gift wrap the thin aluminum foil and the first thing we told people you don't need to wrap it in a gift wrap you need to wrap it in a newspaper Uh, when you give someone, I mean, just a simple example to contact that uh, um, you know newspaper. Why? Because it's more recyclable, and the thin, shiny aluminium would not have a taker. That's because there would be no uh, value add in the chain. So the whole survival or the whole uh, rationale behind the recycling industry is economics, because. ultimately uh, when you recycle a particular item into something that has a use it depends on what value uh, you can give that item i mean can it be sold at a higher price 
uh, does it have use for people in the market and therefore you base your uh, so packaging or any kind of waste becomes an input raw material for someone who's recycling it and that input can only have a higher value if the output or the innovation in the recycling gives it that stature or gives the value add in the whole process so uh, well paper gets made into paper and therefore we've seen the newspapers are been collected for decades and people stack them up well neatly and you'll always find someone coming either at your doorstep and willing to give you some money for it uh, again it's an easy it's it's viable because there's a volume uh, everybody's doing it and therefore i could bail it pack it and send it to for to a paper mill for recycling and uh, obviously it has value uh so this is what it is with every kind of uh, dry recyclable and most of it is packaging is that we need to create uh, one uh, volumes to ensure that they can be collected firstly they are collectible they can be collected the volume is adequate it can be compacted because the biggest measure in the economics is the transport of all kinds of packaging when it goes back to a recycler the transport cost is huge and therefore bailing i believe uh, is a step that happens at aggregators so one of the real innovations that could help trigger high levels of recycling would be if we can compact all our packaging material at source and have a decentralized system where people could easily say a uh, corporate office can easily bail their uh, their packets uh, and send it for recycling so this is one thing that volume and uh, how you can handle the packaging you can help the economics backstream but having said that uh, you know once it reaches recycling uh, does it get recycled in the right way as you said uh, is something that we've been constantly uh, checking on because recycling also consumes water power has an impact um has some off gassing and therefore and the product that gets made through recycling must also be brought back as circular economy in the whole chain so now if you look at the especially with the e-commerce industry thriving and with covid now we can expect a lot more of business happening online uh because everything's moving virtual is that we need to innovate uh, packaging solutions that uh can be recycled very easily so a lot of the packaging that i uh, that we experience is uh, you know primarily paper and cardboard based which is a well established science of you know putting it back as paper and cardboard again and can go on to about 17 times so it has a higher number of times it can be recycled like a cardboard package however then there are the obviously paper uh, comes from Uh, is a renewable energy source from trees from forests and therefore you would obviously need to use so much land and so many trees to make paper so is paper better than plastic is plastic better than paper is a complex answer it needs to be doing an lca or life cycle analysis but uh, intuitively you know paper is compostable and it comes from a biodegradable source so you're more at a comfort zone with it uh but in a in in in, in, the, in countries like india with 4 to 5 months of monsoon and a lot of products uh that can get impacted with humidity for example food clothing uh you know uh, fungus all kinds of things require protection beyond paper and there that's when the beautiful plastic comes in which is you know transparent water resistant lightweight you know you could transport easily because it's not going to add on the carbon emissions of transport because obviously compared to any heavier package so uh, i believe it has its role to play and uh, the idea is that we have enough technology to convert that plastic back into again plastic that would be ideal uh, and plastic again can be recycled seven times if it's a if it's a sturdy up material of plastic but the problem is that we have gone into the one time disposable plastics which don't have much uh, rigidity they don't have much fiber or resin to again create anything and therefore the only choices right now that are available with them are usually using them as a fuel source or uh, you know say in a cement kiln or burning them to make fuel which is one way to handle them uh, but however uh, that could have 
I mean, and most of these facilities claim that they do it without any of gassing or any environmental impact. But I'm 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 certain that there's some residual ash and there's some impact in the environment. And therefore, is that the right way? Uh, and of course, it's not adopting circular economy because it's converting it into one form and then it's into another energy and it's out. So, uh, you know, trading you litter have, for emissions then. Yeah, trading another for challenge. Yeah, trading litter for emissions, and that's a scary proposition. Uh, so uh, there is obviously something that uh, we need to think in our product design, the need for its packaging, and then think of what better ways we can wrap or safely uh, pack our products for consumption. And therefore, uh, we have to see what can be used, uh, you know, in the pipeline. So one of the products that we work closely with, and it's really um, been a great company to be involved with as a solution provider, has been Tetpak India. And uh, we have had a 10 year strong partnership with them through the Go Green with Tetra Pak program that we've been running in the city of Mumbai, uh, where, we, uh, where we have been able to close the loop uh, through, um, through obviously the sustainably embedded into the package. So Tetra Pak cartons have six layers. They are primarily paper-based. So they have about 70, 75% paper. And that paper also being a sustainable uh, focused company in terms of their product design. The paper also has this FSC label, Forest Stewardship Council label, which ensures it's sourced from responsible forests. And uh, the quality of paper is really good. Uh, and so 75% paper, polyethylene makes up about 20%. The balance 5% is aluminium. So it is a multi-layer pack, but again, primarily paper-based. And it is needed to keep and preserve food, that is milk, juices, tomato pulp, you know, um, cream that we use uh, safe uh, for us to consume, as well as uh, can be stored for a long time. Like, especially now in the COVID, like you need milk in remote areas and stuff, this would be a good package. So sometimes you need packaging for a particular application. And what we have worked with Tetra Pak and we've seen them as a very focused organization towards environment is that they have done a lot of work much before the Swachh Bharat mission, or much before the buzz uh, in terms of EPR, that's extended producer responsibility, is to ensure that the pack is fully recycled. So uh, they they have collaborated with recyclers, or you know, be over 16 years ago, to make sure that that pack can be converted into something very useful. So what they do is the pack gets collected, it gets uh, compacted in a baler, so it's easily flattened just like newspaper can. So that's uh, low impact on transportation. We send it to the factory for recycling. Uh, there it gets part like a chutney, you make a chutney out of it. First you shred it, then you make a chutney, you pulp it, and then you convert it under high pressure temperature into composite sheets. These sheets uh, get held together because of the polyethylene in the in the original package. They hold the, they hold the composite sheet together, make it very rigid and strong, and therefore it's water resistant as well, and can have innumerable applications uh, to, to replace wood. Example, uh, they use as pellets for storing grains. They we make uh, they make the composite sheets into we we take them and we make them into garden benches, school desks, chairs, tables, the whole office furniture, uh, pen stands, photo frames, all kinds of stuff. Very durable. And uh, through the Go Green with Tetra Pak program, we've been able to bring this back to the community. So the Go Green with Tetra Pak program allows citizens like you and me to deposit these cartons at collection centers. So we have 44 collection centers at Lions Fresh and Sakai Vindar stores in Mumbai. Uh, we are partnering with them for this program and uh, they, anybody can deposit them. And then when we convert them into sheets and make furniture, we donate school desks back in the community. So through this, uh, we have been able to also get more participation, more eco-consciousness among citizens because they see their, their end product, uh, their waste being converted into a resource when it comes back. So for recycling to really work, obviously the application uh, must be user-friendly, must be something we can easily adopt, easily available. 
and also to get community to recycle more they must see the recycled products otherwise it's just out of sight so this is and how do you incentivize program. them so, uh, so I mean, how do you actually, incentivize uh, the collection? Because as you rightly said, right, and the way it has worked, and this that is, is the key. That's this is a solution. surprise for many. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. newspapers. Everyone who has grown up in India, right, they all know that every single household has been this habit is in this habit right. of collecting newspapers, stacking them properly, and then handing them over. And this, right. as you said, right, can be recycled seventeen times. So once you have the segregation, you have the proper collection, aggregation, recycling. The whole cycle works, right, in an economical way. You right. you, you talk about something very similar that you are able to do with tetra pack packaging also, but. To how exactly the people are incentivized because the newspaper there is someone who will come who will pay you money and then they'll buy right. the, the let's say the residual right. red newspapers so, right how does it work for this right. so for this uh, we do it as community incentivization because again for recycling to be viable at any any level at at the segregation source you need volume so if i alone as my house collected it and it would not be viable for me to pack it into a truck one ton, two tons, three tons, and send it to a factory. That's the whole volume game with recycling. So what we've done is uh, we don't incentivize the individual, but we incentivize the community. So if you have like a school who partners with us or a corporate, when they collect 10,500 cartons, which is a substantial number, we bring back a recycled product for everybody to use, like a garden bench, which is kept in their garden and everybody can see. So this is how they get more motivated. And there are lots and we have about over 190 points like these uh, community groups. Uh, and we are connected in this hub spoke model across Mumbai uh, to a, even the logistics is important because you could segregate, you could have the volume, but then you need to have clusterized volume for pickup. So okay. before aggregation, you need very good logistics uh, for making the whole recycling chain uh, viable and the reason the whole program works is because the composite sheet that we make has uh, many applications one and there is a value to that sheet I mean one sheet costs you know 2000 rupees one of the thicknesses cost so there is your waste that is converted into something that can be traded or sold at a higher value and therefore I can bring some value to the cartons when the whole you know to spend some amount in terms of logistics and transportation so to make any recycling viable one is the economics that plays a very very pivotal role and beyond economics is the functionality of the use of the, the recycled innovation that you've made does it have multiple applications does it have a market uh, can that market grow you know so then then the waste which should be some it should be an input to a factory for recycling, which they're willing to put money on the table for. Then the whole chain and, works. And the product, the final product that you're talking about, does it have economic value in an open market, which is sufficient to sustain the entire chain? Or do you do you still need more support from Tetra Pak or any other organizations to uh, make this chain yes. work? Yes, Tetra Pak does support. They do contribute, uh, they do subsidize the whole back-end collection pickup uh, and that they do it as their commitment to the environment. Uh, but yes, the whole aim is to make this self-sufficient over time. And uh, definitely there is a market for the final composite sheets. And there is another, so there is a market for composite sheets. Another way the Tetra Pak carton also gets recycled is uh, it get, the paper part gets converted to paper and cardboard back again. So paper board is what it's called. And the polyethylene aluminum is extracted out separately to make polyal composite sheets. So there are two ways of, so another thing with recycling technologies, you need multiple uh, because the whole thing is dependent on a market. So to, today you have a market for composite sheets and well, it's water resistant, but it's not waterproof and it has, this, it can do indoor furniture, not so much of outdoor. So you also make sure your packaging can have multiple other applications so that it's spread just to diversified product mix. And the paper board is again used to make, so even your Taj Mahal tea box is actually recycled from a Tetra Pak carton, the box that you get. And that, that is how it's coming back to you or your you know, toothpaste carton that's also made from recycled cartons. So this is something like another use and application of paper becoming paper board again. And the poly al sheets are used for roofing. So a lot of like, if you see these bio toilets in Goa, there was a project that was done with Tetra Pak 
where they have uh, used the polyal sheets for making mobile uh, toilets. So applications are many and therefore the whole chain works. And uh, obviously the consumer uh, has to follow certain steps like that clean, flatten, you don't want moisture in the cartons. So all that awareness education is needed. Uh, so if all this was mixed with every other waste, then uh, it could not, uh, the recycler wouldn't take it if there was too much moisture. So yeah. I think, I mean, so as you talk about, right, so of course there are multiple things that have to be aligned and it, it's very simple in principle. It just gets so difficult in practice that you need to yeah. have the segregation, you need to have the proper collection, you need to have aggregation, you, you need to have a viable end use. I just want to focus a little bit more on the end use that we talk about, right? So if we look at, let's say, some of the other uh, other streams, waste streams, so organic. Now, the the manure that you generate out of organic waste streams still is not let's say it's not lucrative enough to pay for the entire cost of the system and hence it does pay it, it does definitely has something which which is sustainable in some way but it's not really at a level where you could you could also have certain amounts that you can make investments in improvement of your facilities right because it has a huge land requirement the processes are still yeah. relatively not that let's say uh, uh, they can be expedited further right there's a lot more technology and innovation that can come in but the industry currently doesn't leave margins for those investments to come in and you kind of are, are working it's just barely sustainable if we look at some other ones let's say you had pet uh, granules that were made out of the recycled pet now with the lower energy cost suddenly they were outpriced in the market but otherwise they had a viability uh, on a standalone basis as an input with with a certain quality and with a certain use case mm -hmm. now when you talk about the, uh, the the product that you are making now one is to have them used in a niche domain which is only for some bio applications where the competition is kind of cut out right so it essentially becomes a a game where there's only few uh, kind of products that can compete but the real sustainability can come in the real circularity can come in when the output product is able to to survive on its own uh, sure. with any other product right and that is what i just want to understand a little better from you that the, the outputs that you talk about which can be generated out of these multi-layered packaging either by separating them or by pulping them and creating some other product out of them do they have a viability in a standalone market without any protection for this kind of uh, uh, you know the source of uh, the raw material source without having a particular requirement of what kind of raw material source goes in production of those outputs can it sustain on its own in the market i think over time uh, it, there is potential because a lot of it's again demand supply right so there's a lot of people who are now looking at uh, eco-friendly products looking at products that are Vehicles, especially like builders, architects, you know, the, the larger consumers who would use it for paneling or doors or bigger applications, um, furniture, you know. So uh, I think uh, it's all about demand supply and I think that will make it more sustainable. From what I've observed of the years, the volume of the cartons being recycled is increasing and, uh, you know, the numbers are going up at the, at the recycling facility and there is a market that they're tapping uh, towards this. So I'm optimistic about it. At the current moment, it is uh, evolving, as we can see. Uh, and definitely, uh, you know, uh, it's about the, it's about people wanting to use this. So, you know, people should be willing to use this to replace all kinds of wood or wood products. So, as you said, the value of the price at which the raw material is kind of landed at the recycling uh, facility does control its input and output so as you said pet is a very fluctuating market so once it was at 36 rupees a kilo and then it drops and you know in monsoon it drops further and therefore a lot of you see people picking it up because when it lands at a scrap dealer or at an aggregator or a recycler there is money to trade and that's because there is uh, obviously something that is going to be made into which people are going to buy so it can only sustain if it's self-sustainable. I mean, how much will companies even put on the table? I mean, I mean, they could do it for a few years, but they won't be able to sustain it longer. Uh, so ultimately, for anything to survive is economics. Therefore, I'm, I'm kind of rest assured that the economics is working because we've been working on this for a long time. 
and uh, i believe that now with a lot of consumerism working towards eco consciousness especially um, post pandemic i think i'm hoping everybody has had a reset button and uh, they are going to be more uh, conscious of how the environment gets impacted by our actions and therefore will make right choices in terms of products that they buy and that will sustain this industry so if you were to look at the thin gauge packaging that we are also you know which you were mentioning about e-commerce being something that we all uh, because we at are you are also sell on amazon so we have our products that we uh, have available on the amazon platform for example our small home composter uh, it converts kitchen waste into compost for homes like 1 kg a day 15 kg in weight um, 3 feet by 2 feet and it needs to be packed so obviously it's got parts inside and we don't want anybody to damage it during transport so i've always uh, wanted to use uh, sustainable packaging or packaging that can be at least reused or recycled so what we've done is we've wrapped it uh, rather than so we have cardboard that wraps the key protection items inside which can be easily converted back into uh, sent for recycling uh, through any kabadi wala route But what we've wrapped it into is a thick tarpaulin sheet, which is a thicker plastic sheet, uh, which is um, which is user friendly in the sense that we encourage our users to use that sheet to uh, cure their compost. So when they harvest their compost, they can use that same sheet to collect that and to dry it out. So uh, the idea is simple: that the packaging should have value when the user opens it at home. or in their office or wherever they are they can think of a very easy way to either use it or recycle it and if the manufacturer of the industry can think along those lines uh, beyond their product I mean you care a lot about what what product goes in but you have to also think about your packaging and uh, the onus must rest on the manufacturer because unless the user has a system or an infrastructure in place as an individual they don't have power to do much so um you know it should find its way in the value chain of recycling and there are options so we could have for example use jute i mean i love to use wrap my machine in jute and send it when well, it got damaged because jute after all can be ripped apart it doesn't have that strength so this is about functionality right because i yeah. think this this also ties very ni- nicely with what you said initially about tetra pack right so you have you have in the design phase itself you have already planned for what happens at the end of life uh, right. in terms of the reuse what exactly can you make out of it that it can easily be folded back and it can e- it's easy for bailing so you have thought about the entire life cycle at the end of life also now just to bring back the topic into into this particular aspect right now you have successfully demonstrated a model to function in certain part of the country and of course it is a large generator so percentage wise i'm sure that you you have needle moves right but if you could just uh, uh, sort of educate us a little bit more about what is the so h- how many different such product exist and what is the scale of this problem that we are talking about and what what is it that could make this model easily replicable across let's say the non specific brand that you talk about the other brands which are out there so what are the challenges what are the opportunities and what is the scale of this whole issue so the uh, the whole viability even for us to take this to multiple cities is the whole whole uh, value chain at every step uh must be economically viable so it does boil down to a certain math uh in terms of the whole viability of the project right and uh, it also requires each stakeholder to uh to kind of play their part so i could i could take this program to another city put the back end have a recycler everything is but the, the consumers are not made aware and don't give the input the whole thing collapses so uh right now i feel that uh the whole thought with decentralized is to to think little think more about what i can do in that purview and you can create these decentralized models in multiple locations by ensuring all steps in the chain are in place and i think the real uh, 
innovation required here is for companies to really think about sustainability in their product design so that whatever package it may be whoever uh, you know you're using that package must have at least um, some viability of recycling into a value added product so one is the, the manufacturers who are sending these uh, products out have thought of that whole chain whatever it may be uh, in terms of whatever packaging that they are doing they have the right labeling on it so people uh, you know at the front end know what to do when they receive it so that's the manufacturer to think about sustainability in design ensure adequate awareness and labeling is in place the second is that there is a there's a collaborative effort so like I, my product is recyclable but it will never be of enough volume unless 10 others are so i have to ensure all other recyclables can be you know collected together so i have to collaborate which means that i may be uh, cardboard and you may be paper or somebody may be plastic we we are all working at individual level so what happens is we don't get the adequate volume or the back end logistics so when you talk about putting material recovery facilities, which could be put, you know, where there is some technology, uh, as we had talked about, you know, some sensors to extract out things. I mean, we need that innovation because uh, alone the economics uh, of scale won't be there. So if we if we have packaging as in, uh, you know, industry coming together, maybe the packaging association putting this out there that, you know, we come together and we uh, provide each uh, solution in our in our world because it depends on the application like right now they are tetra pack carton is for food protection so that's why it's designed for that somebody would need to you know protect the tv so they need some cushioning for that so whatever the application is uh, when they are making their product they ensure that they work with their supply chain to ensure the recyclability is in place and of course the the logistics if you collaborate so you know putting communities together have a decentralized model but get people together to get the volume and i feel that recycling is uh, there but again um, this whole awareness of recycled products or people knowing that you know this is a recycled product like it needs more glamour like you need to know that i'm using a recycle because the demand is more and therefore the recyclers can survive uh, I feel that everybody knows newspaper can be recycled and be recycled for years, but many people don't know what can be and what cannot be recycled. So this kind of, uh, you know, collaborative awareness amongst people uh, will propel solutions uh, towards uh, more recycling, I feel. So, uh, and I think also use... when we talk about, you know, this, this is a great example because when we talk about the newspapers, right, most of the people who collect newspapers and hand it over to whoever is collecting it, uh, after segregating at home, they in fact are not necessarily thinking about sustainability and circular economy. Right. It is just that it is yeah. part of now the habit. It is part of a certain economics. And the way this whole thing has worked is because the pull from the uh, from the paper manufacturers has been strong enough to to pay for the entire supply right. chain it has just worked to some extent the same thing has worked with the pet bottles also because it was the pull that that basically sucked up right from the entire yeah. country almost we don't find the pet bottles littered around but you see you yeah. find a lot of these flexible packaging being littered around everywhere because right. That does not have the same kind of a pull. Now, most of the let's say uh, the waste to energy projects also, they don't necessarily compensate you for that, right? Sometimes they either take it for free and sometimes they even charge it, even though it's a fuel that comes out. So whatever the economics work over there. Now, when we talk about uh, the the kind of packaging uh, where you're talking about, right? So if there is a certain let's say collaboration between the different packaging manufacturers or in general the manufacturers who are the source who are the generators of these packaging waste at, you know uh, from the product perspective if there is a pull that is created uh, in terms of the reuse of the packaging waste that has come out that probably could be the main driver that can just streamline the entire process True. of collection in the country right that's right i truly believe that uh it's it's a simple uh, solution, but it's it's one that'll work because it's the back end. The, a lot of the economics is in this whole collection, aggregation, transportation, and to make that viable, you need volume, and to make the volumes, you need people to collaborate. So, I mean, that's how it'll all pull, get pulled together. And I think today this is a big challenge. I mean, it's it's really something we. Uh, 
you know, as industry or people working in waste management as well as the industry that is making a lot of the products that are now going to be available on e-commerce must must uh, put our heads together to find uh, uh, the right channel or the right value chain to make sure that our waste is maximized into recycling and not land up uh, affecting the environment. I mean, that's a onus on all of us. So we really need so, to go deep dive into solutions. Now, e-commerce, as you talk about, right? So e-commerce is, of course, one of the big sources now uh, for the sales also. And the e-commerce way of functioning is a bit different than what you will have for a bricks and mortars. Because the packaging also has, let's say, it's the first interaction of a customer with a product, right? So pa packaging has a certain appeal that, that goes beyond the pure functionalities of it in terms of the barrier properties, right? It also is, is the aesthetics of it, and it's also... It influences the purchase decision in a certain manner, where we talk about a, a bricks and mortar shop, where the customer is personally feeling the product. But when we talk about e-commerce, then this equation changes because the packaging is not the first factor that a customer encounters. It's reviews, it's ratings, it's so many other things that, that are part of the, the purchase decision. And packaging only comes into play when the purchase has been made and the product is being delivered now to the customer at the doorstep. And hence the requirement of packaging are very, very different compared to what you will have for a bricks and mortar store. What, what do you see is the primary, let's say one message that you may want to, to, uh, to, to leave about what is it that the packaging innovation industry can think of when it comes to the e-commerce, uh, let's say uh, e-commerce as the primary driver for the packaging growth or the packaging innovations to happen going forward. Uh, one message for uh, packaging industry would be to, um, to look at their design in terms of their input uh, to be more uh, to have their raw materials more uh, related to renewable energy sources. So look at more cellulose or paper and there are lots of innovations in terms of cushioning that you could have in terms of shredded paper, you could have this B kind of hive design in your corrugated sheet that gives it a good thickness. And obviously uh, the water resistant part would be needed which paper unfortunately uh, doesn't have the water resistant part. So for that, when they opt for right now, I think you can think of plastic is to look at plastic packaging that's more recyclable or at least can go through multiple levels of recycling and therefore look at the innovation in using of a water resistant material that is thick enough for to, to be collected and for it to be recycled. And I think another very, very important thing that uh, that the packaging industry needs to look at is labeling, because a lot of the labeling has glues and uh, very small labels that that go as trash. A lot of, and there are lots of labels like for barcodes and this and that, uh, which even, uh, so we have used a lot of, um, and made paper as our labels. They do work. So it is a little more costly uh, right now, but if there's a demand. So again, the labeling could be paper-based because the labeling has a very short life. And uh, I mean, usually after it's read, it's kind of disposed of. So oh, first get disposable of the labels. So I think the whole integrated approach to their packaging, all the elements that they are going to put uh, need to be recycled and must be recycled and that's how they need to think about design. I can I cannot say that okay 80% of mine is cardboard and the rest 20% will be you know bubble wrap and uh, floated plastic paper and then the labels and the stickers and those 20% can go as trash. Uh, that will be a big problem because the num volumes of people buying on e-commerce is increasing and with e-commerce what happens is you buy one one item you don't tend to buy like when you go to a brick and mortar shop, sometimes you'll buy milk for the whole month. Whereas in an e-commerce, you may keep ordering it again and again. So obviously, uh, the, a lot of awareness at the consumer end, because they don't see it, they don't know it, uh, is to kind of, the consumer should also demand. But I think from a packaging industry point of view, they need to look at all the elements. You cannot say that uh, it's an 80-20 kind of thing. And if they look at all elements integrated into what they're offering, um, I think we can have volumes and then things can be recycled.
and just to extend this uh, at the very end just to extend this to the to the packaging of the food containers that is there for the home deliveries because that is another area which has grown significantly right now since you work so much with all the packaging that goes even for the food products right around the country from the tetra pack and others but when it comes to the the food delivery industry what is it that you would see that probably they can do much better they can think about from from the containers that are used to deliver those food right so with food uh, there is a lot of good innovation happening uh, i worked with a interacted with a company called papco that's doing a lot of biocompostable cutlery so they use compostable material that is bioplastic and have been able to make it more resilient and i know because i've i've taken one of their packages and in my compost and it did break down uh, it took a little longer but the, it with the way the things are growing we really really need to find uh, uh biocomposting or mechanical composting facilities and adopt biocompostable food grade uh you know pack uh, packets for especially packing like bread cakes or uh, you know things that i think even now for gravies they have something so which is a combination with a lid that can even hold like a coffee and gravy so uh yeah more of the industry or the restaurants or people like uh, you know skutsi and uh, swiggy should encourage their um, their partners or their restaurants to adopt biocompostable packaging i know it works but the volumes are still small and therefore uh, i feel that because the one time disposable uh, plastic for me it's more more than way it's it's a it's a toxic food issue also because when we consume hot food in a plastic we have micro pellets you know all of us have a credit card size plastic floating in our stomach because of all the micro pellets that are there i mean that's kind of now proven as well so i think it is all about sustainability which requires environment governance and social what you are working you got to look at whether it's safe for the people as well i mean uh, environment is one aspect but social is required and governance needs to come in where you need to you know come together and say hey i need a safe package one that i can consume and two it can be recycled so i think looking at both aspects uh, biocompostable cutlery uh, or biocompostable boxes uh, is a solution uh, that can work and i still feel that I aluminum foil is a better option for a lot of uh food packaging because foil aluminum has a high value raw material and foil can be made into foil again or into aluminum again better than uh a one time disposable plastic box i think this this thank you thank you very much for sharing all these views i think what you have also demonstrated is that you know the the basics of the segregation the collection aggregation and to make into a reusable product a product which has a value in the market this is the model that 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 can be you know replicated beyond the only one thing that we had known earlier which was the newspaper into various other ways and once you have got that model right then this challenge is not such a big challenge because it starts just working and it can also scale very very quickly because it just creates that pull factor people inherently do not necessarily want to create the litter it's just that they do not have the right alternatives and there are a lot of these broken pieces which all need to be fixed and and the initiatives like yourself have shown that it is absolutely possible to do that with the resources that you have put on your at your personal level uh, with certain collaborations that you have i think it just needs more people to get inspired to come together to to just to take the best practices that have been there to put their their smartness their innovation into making sure that this can be replicated across all the other waste streams and this massive challenge that we currently face which is absolutely a solvable problem that that we have and this if we don't solve it this is something which is only going to grow exponentially yeah. and and there is there's nothing i mean we don't ha- have an option to not solve yes, it and this cannot option. be left only for a government or something in the end it, it's about for everyone else everyone among us also to come together just to be conscious about that and our little effort that goes in this whole process and one that's a one entity that takes charge of certain things and just makes that model work it just solves the problem so thank you very much for sharing all those views with us on the show
Thank you, Sandeep. It really inspired me. When you bounce ideas, you get more ideas. So I'm going to go back and hopefully come up with more solutions as we go along. But it's been lovely to be here with you on your show and wishing you all the best in your future endeavors as well. Thank you so much Thank for having me here. Thank you very much. Here. Thanks. Take care. Thanks. Bye. -bye. If you are someone who has useful information on this subject or have success stories that you would like to share, please reach out to me. We need to build a community from all walks of life across the value chain to do our little bit in solving this problem. There are many things that divide us, but planet Earth unites us. Stay tuned for more content on sustainability. Take care and stay safe.